What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. I didn't say VGC 2022 because we're also going to be talking about the future of VGC, you know, VGC 2023 and beyond. Uh, and what I want to talk about today is the issue of dynamic speed tiers, Tailwind, and Prankster combined uh, that I, I think is going to be more of an issue going forward in future generations. Uh, and I'll explain why that is. Um, basically, you know, if you want like a TLDR, uh, some Pokemon get four turns of Tailwind, some Pokemon get three, and it really skews towards Pokemon that are already fairly good in the game. But yeah, before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, and answer my comment question of the day. What Pokemon do you want to be a good Tailwind Pokemon in Gen 9? What do you want to be available? Uh, and also, today is my birthday. I've been on YouTube for six years, and I am turning 23 today, so for more than a quarter of my life, I've been bringing you guys content. If you guys want to support me and just say thank you or happy birthday, there's a little thanks button down there where you can uh, drop me some cash. I would very much appreciate that. Anyways, let's get into it. Happy birthday to me. Uh, what do I want for my birthday? I want uh, I want dynamic speed tiers on Tailwind specifically to go away, and I'll explain why here. So, uh, if you weren't around per for previous generations, you might be confused what I'm talking about when I say like dynamic speed tiers. Basically, in previous generations, how speed tiers worked is they wouldn't update until the turn after they t they like were clicked. So if you had like an icy wind Pokemon, let's go with like icy wind. Nine tails. let's go with that, right? If you were to Icy Wind, something that was faster than a partner Pokemon, the next turn, your partner would be outspeeding the thing that got Icy Winded. However, in this generation, if you Icy Wind a Pokemon, it immediately becomes slower, and the speed tiers re, uh, get reorganized, and, the, and your Pokemon can outspeed this turn. I like that. What I don't like it on is Tailwind, because specifically, I feel that Tailwind kind of gets monopolized by a particular small group of Pokemon plus Suicune, which is an exception to the rule, but I'll explain why. Um, but yeah, let's get into that. So right now, Tailwind activates immediately. And if and because of that, because Tailwind activates immediately, uh, it actually sort of made Tailwind a lot better this generation than it would have been in other generations. And we don't quite see it being as important as it will be in future generations because we have access to stuff like Max Airstream, which obviously, you know, you have a Thunderous, you run Fly, you run Defiant, you're a Max Airstream Pokemon. You can like basically just deal with Tailwind that way. Like you just outspeed it after three Max Airstreams or even two or one, depending on how fast your team is. That is is sort of a reason we don't really see the issue this generation, but having certain Pokemon get four turns of Tailwind and other Pokemon get three very much skews the viability of Tailwind to only a particular subset of Pokemon. So let me talk about old Tailwind setters and new Tailwind setters. Well, I guess old Tailwind setters that immediately became better, and I'll explain why. So in current VGC, all right, let's actually start with old VGC. In old VGC, Tailwind was actually spread out fairly evenly among a lot of Pokemon. Prankster Tailwind was preferred for the most part because it was more reliable to get up. However, Prankster Tailwind and regular Tailwind had the same amount of turns they would increase your speed due to the fact that it wouldn't take place until the next turn. Nowadays, that isn't the case, but I digress. You know, we, we go into like the old days, we saw stuff like Mega Salamence running Tailwind, Rayquaza wouldn't usually do it, Lunala would sometimes do it, you would never see that nowadays, Tailwind Lunala is like just objectively not very good. Uh, Yveltal would run it, Crobat would run it, uh, for the same reason that Suicune does now, however, its speed uh, was mostly just for avoiding stuff like uh, Taunt, uh, Tornadus would run it, Wimscott would run it, obviously, Togekiss would uh, occasionally run it, Mandibuzz would almost always run it. There were a lot of Pokemon that ran Tailwind. Zapdos, you never see Tailwind in nowadays because it like just, you know, it's not really meant to Tailwind. It'll just max Airstream. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot of Pokemon that could run Tailwind. And the notable ones among these that you don't see nowadays are the bulky Tailwind Pokemon. I completely forgot Kumpa even got Tailwind. That's really funny. Uh, but yeah, bulky Tailwind Pokemon are pretty much extinct in this format because of the lack of value they bring to the table when you compare them to fast or... I guess more importantly, Prankster Tailwind Pokemon. Because why would you use, I guess Suicune isn't the best example because it's one of the few exceptions to the rule. Let's go with Corviknight. Corviknight gets Tailwind. In any other generation, Corviknight would almost always run Tailwind, but not in this generation and probably not in Gen 9 because they're probably not going to fix this. Why would you run Tailwind Corviknight 
next to a Kyogre when you could run Whimsicott or Tornadus and get four full turns of boosting that Kyogre's speed by two times. In previous generations, even if you were running like a Prankster Tailwind Pokemon, you would almost always have to lead off with like a fake out user, like let's go with like Rillaboom, right? Well, I guess Incineroar would be like the actual true combo. You would run like Incineroar plus Tornadus because you still had to deal with the fact that you needed Tailwind up this turn so that next turn your your Kyogre got like the speed boost. So it wasn't uncommon to see people like just try to guarantee their Trick Room went off um, and like have to work for like that one turn to make sure that they could benefit the next turn. You couldn't just lead off like Kyogre plus Tornadus into a... Uh, you couldn't lead off Kyogre plus Tornadus into a Pokemon that would be faster than you. Let's go with like Regieleki. So if there was like a Regieleki on the other side of the field, which it didn't exist, but it's like a fast Pokemon. Let's go with Tapu Koko, actually, just to, just to be like clear. If there was a Tapu Koko on the other side of the field and you had a Kyogre and a Tornadus, you had to protect your Kyogre that turn because otherwise the Tapu Koko would still be able to outspeed your Kyogre that turn and KO it with like a wild charge. In this generation, that isn't the case. The Tapu Koko is immediately threatened by the presence of Tornadus and Kyogre because Tornadus can immediately speed up the Kyogre and allow it to one-shot things. That's why Kyogre became, like, it was always very good, but that's why Kyogre is like even better this generation and that's what makes it so difficult to deal with. We saw a similar thing with like Durant. Um, Durant Whimsicott was a very powerful gimmick, not gimmick, but like very, very powerful like duo that you would see in uh, like series two and I guess up until like series five, maybe a little bit further. Um, and the reason it was so powerful was because of that immediate speed boost. In previous generations, if you had something like a fast fire type, uh, I guess I can't really think of many fire types that outspeed Durant normally, but even like just a fast special attacker. Let's go with like Cinderace, right? Cinderace is not a counter to Whimsicott Durant, because Durant can max quake a Cinderace before Cinderace can move, because Tailwind in the max quake one-shots it. In previous generations, you had to protect your Durant, and then, you know, your Cinderace could deal with whatever. You basically had one free turn to target down the Tailwind Pokemon. It was a little bit of a mind game, it was kind of annoying, but it was just, it was just like, it felt like you were in the Tailwind a little bit more. And because of like the fact that like you get that immediate power this generation, you almost never see these bulky Tailwind Pokemon show up. If we were playing in a generation without immediate Tailwind, uh, if everything got three turns instead of four turns, because that's really the big issue here, immediate Tailwind versus next turn you get Tailwind, um, like we would still see things like Tailwind Corviknight exist. We would probably see like something like Tailwind Corviknight with even like Iron Defense, Body Press, Roost. Like that would be like a legitimate set that people would run. Probably Leftovers, maybe like a Psychic Seed if you're crazy. We used to see Psychic Seed Mandibuzz next to Tap Melee with Tailwind because you get the same value out of this Mandibuzz as you would like a Whimsicott or a Tornadus, but you would prefer the Mandibuzz because it was bulky. Nowadays, you want that immediate speed boost, especially next to like Tapu Lele. You definitely don't want Mandibuzz because Tapu Lele gives you that psychic train, making it so a lot of like Tailwind users can't be, well, I guess, you know, most Tailwind users are flying, but some Tailwind users like Whimsicott can now not be prankster taunted by a faster Pokemon. Uh, so yeah. Tailwind, uh, Tailwind Pelipper was another thing that we used to see, uh, and it did use like its partner. Usually it would be like a Swift Swim. In 2017, we, we went like Golduck. 2017 it was Golduck. You would use like Swift Swim Golduck to deal with like opposing uh, Pokemon that would want to put pressure on the Pelipper, and you would get an immediate KO followed by the Tailwind, thus allowing your er, thus allowing your Golduck to outspeed things even under Tailwind uh, because of the fact it had both of these uh, abilities open, Swift Swim and uh, Tailwind at the same time. And you'd even see like Psychic Seed Driftblum because it would give it that immediate speed boost. And while yes, you could still use Psychic Seed Drift Bloom today because it's so fast, it might as well be a prankster Pokemon. It's just that you, it, it isn't quite as valuable as the guaranteed four turn Tailwind. I don't know. I just wanted to put this video up because I, I noticed that was like a thing that happened this generation. These are pretty much, well, not Murkrow because Murkrow doesn't exist, but if Murkrow's in the next game, it's gonna carry Tailwind. Not really. Uh, it does have a little bit of a niche. It's a dark type, so it can't be prankster taunted. So that's actually really cool. Uh, but yeah. These are pretty much the four Tailwind Pokemon, and I would argue that these are the two actual Tailwind Pokemon, because you actually see these two Pokemon, and then it drops off considerably with Talonflame and Suicune being at less than 1% usage, because Talonflame's uh, immediate Tailwind is conditional on it having full HP, and Suicune doesn't have immediate Tailwind, it just has very, very, um, why am I typing Suicune here? It has very, very reliable Tailwind. It still only has three turns, but it can't be flinched with inner focus, and that's the reason people run it. So yeah. I don't know. I just want to put this video out. I wanted to get my opinion out there on why Tailwind has been a little bit 
messed up this generation. I think that we need to... I, I, I Personally, my solution is keep immediate speed tier changes for everything but Tailwind. I think immediate Icy Wind is fine because Icy Wind's an attack. I think immediate Thunder Wave is fine as long as we get rid of the full para. I think immediate Scary Face is fine because it's just... It's, it's a single target thing. But when you're speeding up your whole side of the field immediately, that's my issue. It isn't that Tailwind's overpowered. It's that certain Pokemon have better Tailwinds than other Pokemon. And it's a very, very, very short list of very good Tailwind Pokemon. Where before it was spread out and it allowed for a lot more things to get used. So yeah, that's the gist of my video. I just wanted to get it out there. It wasn't exactly very scripted. A little bit of a rant, but I wanted to talk to you guys about it. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, uh, and of course, leave your opinion on Prankster Tailwind uh, going into Gen 9. Do you think it needs to be changed? Uh, let me know. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.